It was to establish what, if, if, if and what is the bank charge about, if, if indeed there is one. So it was a very important thing that you didn't want madded by any other issue. This all escalated from a bank charge. So the beginning. Um, is, yeah, is yeah, an alleged bank charge, bank charge that, 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 that came when draft orders with no seal or signature started to come through the family home, yeah. stating there was going to be an eviction and they'd put a relative by marriage that, that had been seen as simply years mm. and no contact they, they put them down at the address right as as living there and the eviction notices were addressed to them yeah. and so, so it was all very weird and then and we had harassment from the bank concerned yeah. Phone calls telling us to get, get out. You've got no interest on a home that had been paid for. I mean, the only people that don't seem to have an interest is the people that live there and paid. And all these outside people running around screaming and shouting mm. I've got no input um, I managed to get the computerized records I got in actual fact um, all the papers filed before and after the claim commenced I've had it confirmed by masters at the World Courts of Justice that they are draft orders. I've had two solicitors on one barrister confirm that draft orders should not be going out to the public. It should be a judge's order with a seal and signature. I managed, with the help of Felton Police, to get these computer records and all the papers filed before and after the claim commenced. Mm. I managed to get um, the, the um, particulars of claim that had no signature, yeah. but, but the name of the man who'd done it mm. had been printed with the black mm. printing set. Yeah. He, he was nowhere around to be seen. So this, this farcical five-day trial me and Adon in December 2013 and um, there was much talk of a charging order, a charging order, which when she checked the registry trust, It came back, back nothing registered, so there's no charging order. What is a charging order? A char charging order is something they obtain on the house for the, the amount of money that they perceive you to owe them. And then they'll simply go ahead and create an order for the sale. Okay. Is this, is this where some of the harassment, you say you were from around about 2013, uh, police well, yeah. targeted you? Yes. Can you so, tell me a little, little bit about, about that? Yes. They, they, the, the um, relatives boast of their connections. There were 
was I mean, don't, don't mention any police officers. No, no. <laughs> there, there was um, witnesses were there when um, threats were made that if you didn't sell the house and pay four hundred thousand pounds, that they would get a police investigation. And that were police officers making those threats? It was, was, it, it, was it, it was different relatives who were involved with the other people concerned in, in chasing this claim. They later repeated this claim when there was um, a mediation meeting yeah. um, at Lamb Chambers in the in the city in the West End. Yeah. Yeah. Lamb Chambers, Richard Powell was the Richard Powell was the barrister, uh, and a, a, a mediator called Michael actually carried in that threat. He carried, he said there's going to be a police investigation if you don't pay £400,000. £400,000. Yeah. And I did point out that we are in the building with these people that have beaten and abused us relatives, yeah. um, trashed the house. Why are you carrying a threat from one room to the other? And, and then he had a row with the current solicitor that they were nose to nose yeah. having an argument. And then the current solicitor said, when you went out the room, he was saying, get, get them to, to pay the money, the £400,000. The appeals don't win, they never, never win. And then when the solicitor went out the room, the mediator was harassing me to settle. So the whole thing, when it got to five o'clock, having been there from nine in the morning, and it cost him £1,500 that has to be borrowed, I just said, that's it, going, nothing was achieved. It was just more, more money. More money taken and then um, before Christmas 2014 one Saturday it was the 6th of December a quarter to 6 I heard the front door being kicked. Um, it was being kicked in. Yeah. As it was giving way, I opened it and um, a man stood there, quite a big built man, yeah. sweating, very, very pumped up. Yeah. Very wild eyed, yeah. Yeah. shrieking out this accusation. I've got the proof you, you did this, and I, I shook my, my head from side to side. Yeah. Then, then he said you were taken to a local mental hospital. So I said no, I wasn't. I had a years counselling for a bereavement that happened in front of me. Yeah. Then he pushed his way in and I went ahead of him to the kitchen 
happened to get a friend in the kitchen that had bought shopping. Yeah. When he saw the, the friend, he, he he ran out. The friend's comment was, was, I've never seen anyone move so fast, but he threw a piece of paper that, that told me to, to be at Hounslow Police Station at one o'clock on the 9th of December right. 2014. Was well, this wearing a uniform? No, no plain clothes. No. So you, you, could, you, how, how do you identify him as a police officer? He said he was a detective but he didn't say his name but he later I got the name from the piece of paper. So you do have, have the name. And yeah, he, he recognise him. And your, your friend, did they get, get a good yes, look? Yes, a, a good look, yes. Okay. And he threw this bit of paper in. At me. And I picked it up and saw one o'clock at Council Police Station. DC the name. Yeah. It did, you, did you go? Yeah, I went and there was a police. I had a solicitor on each side of me. And when he saw me, he was over friendly. Hello, how are you? Are you all right? I said, nope. Why? Really? Oh, yeah. I said because of your behaviour the other night and I went through exactly what he said and did. Mm. He, he said, what? I, I treated you politely. I could have arrested you and put, put you in the police van. I said, what for? And he didn't answer me. Mm. So so I said, and it was all being recorded, I, I said, you're, you're, you're a liar, you're, you're lying, and I don't trust you, and I don't want you near me. And they took, took him away and brought an under person in mm. who was laughing, and they said, we want you to write 12 pages I said fine and when I wrote 5 pages they looked disappointed and threw it in a plastic bag and said you can go uh, what, what did you write on those 5 pages um, what was what was do you, you were a, a he was reading things out for me to, to write and he said, can you do it on lines and not on lines? Can you do the day? Can you do this? So what he called, I did. One solicitor didn't want me to do it, and the other one did. So I just did it because I thought yeah. then. <laughs> if you've got one solicitor that wants you to do it, one that doesn't, you have to question both solicitors, I'd say. And you see, I've got Asperger's syndrome, yeah. I can be talked in, and it, it's, it, very, it's very easy. It's very easy, so yeah. Yeah. I trust, yeah. but you can't, can't trust people like, like this, yeah. so I've since found out. So. Yeah. After that, yeah. I was subjected right through past the middle of 2014 to frequent phone calls along the lines of, oh, there's going to be great trouble keeping that at home. And this was a detective sergeant. So I I said, well, what would you, you know? 
about it. Bang the phone down. I went to my GP. The first thing she said was, are these people on the payroll? I said, you're not the first to have said that. Then there was another phone call saying, have you ever been detained under the mental health act? I said, another police officer. It was a detective sergeant. And again. The name, the, 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 yeah. Right. And he said, have you ever been detained under the mental act? I said, no, have you? And so he said, have you ever been sectioned under? I said, no, have you? And he banged the phone down. I put in a complaint. Mm -hmm. And it, it didn't really go anywhere. Yeah. I had someone from the Hounslow Police Station call me and they were aggressive. If I said, what is your name? Mm -hmm. I down went the phone. Right. So it it didn't go anywhere and I went to Chiswick Police Station and PC said to me anything that goes to Hounslow will be shut down. We're not all the same, you know, I said. I know you're not. And this particular PC was the first person who put me on the path to digging because he said to me this these are documents coming for you door not, not right they have no warrant attached and they have no seals or signatures of the judge and you should call 999 if they keep coming through your door or if anything comes from them. Mm. And you, did, did you follow that advice? I did, did follow that, that advice what because happened? we had eviction attempts on the 25th of May 2015 <laughs> and we, we had eviction attempts on the 10th of July 2015 by which time I had obtained the the computerised records mm. and all the papers filed before and after the claim commenced mm. with the assistance of Felton Police. And the police called an inspector out mm. and she came out and they were very unhappy to see that there were no payments to the case man file. The case has been heard and created in one, one day. It's not possible. And the police said that that's not possible. Mm. Because they know these computerised records as the minutes. Mm. So they're very well used to reading these. Yeah. Yeah. And they went out and they told the bailiffs to get off the land and fix the locks that they they drilled at 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that's a, a little win um, on, the, on the road. Yeah, yeah they um, were helping us mm. uh, up, up until that 7th of December. Um, yeah. Uh, Just before you go there, I I wanted to touch on the fact that you you mentioned earlier that you think the police are pretty much bought and paid for. And this is a criminal cartel that's operating in London within the police, the bailiffs, the courts. Tell me a little about that. Well, um. The, the, the trouble, really, I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing after speaking to the PC from Cheswick Police Station mm -hmm. when he said about the paperwork 
work. So I, I did some research, which I, 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 I am a bit of a researcher as well as a campaigner. I researched the law firm Optima Legal, who was on this case, and I also read the independent report, which was published in January 2014 regarding UK courts have been infiltrated by criminal gangs. Mm. So I researched Dr. Malegal and found that they, for a firm that size, they only had one law accreditation. Mm. They had 30 shows accounts mm. offshore mm -hmm. and they had um, they hire in the barristers and solicitors and pay them off and it had puzzled me their behaviour because I, I had said one day in the court they behave as if they were a gang yeah Paging through the court with this attitude, and so, so then someone else mentioned to me, "Don't want to worry you, but you're surrounded by a criminal gang." I said, "I'd already gathered that." So I, I took all the paperwork down and my research, and I. I Took it to Hounslow Police Station because another event was a man in a black suit stepped out in front of me. And this came after, this came literally a few days after reporting to Hounslow Police Station and getting a crime number yeah. on, on this page. The first bits of paperwork I had. Yeah. It was um, approximately spring 2015. It was a sunny day, about 11:15, and this man that was over the other side of the road yeah. in Arlington Gardens, W4. Stepped out across the road and stood in front of me, mm -hmm. carrying a black briefcase. Yeah. And he said to me, "You better stop digging, because if you don't, you'll be killed." Mm. And then he walked off in the direction of the green and on the way to Chiswick High Road. I had to be somewhere at a court to help somebody, so I had to continue with what I was doing. Yeah. But when I was finished that, friends urged me to go to Townsville Police Station again. And I went. And the uniformed officers, a lot, all along, they take things very seriously. And they were rushing around and they were going online, checking out this optimum illegal and anything to do with companies. They gave me a crime reference number. I was one of the first in London to get the first crime reference number mm -hmm. and, and um, it went from there mm -hmm. as the weeks went on after reporting there was another event which was I was coming back along 
war power gardens. Um, and the same man stepped out. The same man? Yeah, he attacked me. Um, I managed to push him off, but I, my nose got hurt and it was bleeding. When you say it attacked you, what, what did he do? He, he just was throwing me to the ground and I, I right. struggled and he then went off straight down the road. Yeah. So I was in the next road to the house and then I, I quickly on my mobile called the police, made a 999 call and they came. Yeah. Now what happened was they said they were investigating and they said they couldn't do anything because they didn't know who it was. And then I got another letter to say they'd reopened it and then it was shut down again. Right. So there's a lot of shenanigans going on. Oh, around yes. This investigation. Yeah. So some people want it in, up and running and they want to get to the bottom of it. Yes. And some people we want it closed down. Yes. This is what it looks like. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. right. So and you want it up, up and running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you want to make people aware uh, of, of what's happening. Well, with regard to the police harassment, the detective harassment, I had been to six different police forces because I, I, I went to Slough, I went to Hammersmith and Fulham. Hammersmith and Fulham were astonished. They said it can't, can't be a police officer. Mm. I went to Chiswick. Chiswick looked on the police computer and said you're not going to be arrested because there would be something on the national computer and there's nothing there. Yeah. So I must have fallen and said, we don't, don't disbelieve you, but it can't be a police officer. I said, it's got to be that they was at the station. Yeah. So they said that it's not procedure and they, they, they told me what the procedure would be. It would be two uniformed officers and then we would come to, to detectives right. yeah. and it would always be uniformed officers coming first and at the moment with Fulham the last interaction you had with Fulham police is that they would be keen to, to work with you to get to the bottom of this is that your feeling well I do I, I do hope so because the I spoke to Mira Bahala at the evening in standard and she was outraged she said get back down on that police station and say there's been a crime committed because um, events took a different turn when I was incarcerated for the 25 hours at Hamstead Police Station. When was this? Um, this was on the 23rd of February, just gone. Right. Okay. Um, and um, I was just, I collapsed twice. One collapse where they called ambulance to the the police station is an on. Um, why, why were you in, 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 in incarcerated? Why, did, why were you in uh, police cells? They didn't say. Uh, uh, where, where did they get, get come and kidnap you from? 
Um, I was go. I went well from Chiswick Police Station because I, I went there because there'd been extensive looting at the address at the house, and right. they were, were. I popped in to see how far if they traced any of the. The they, yeah, and I, I stepped in there, mm -hmm. and the side door opened, and Inspector Edwards, who had previously helped, was sort of yeah. popped his head round, and they arrested me. I said I didn't consent, yeah. but they said tough. Yeah, and the arrest was for what? Didn't say. They didn't say. I was Were just you taken. With the, they didn't no. Say. no. 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 You were released 25 hours later. Uh, yes. And I. Tell me about your time in just one minute. That's fine. Yeah. Tell me about your time in. The, the, the 25 hours, what actually happened in those 25 hours? Um, I was on my own in a very, very dirty cell yeah. with um, the toilet was extremely filthy. It distressed me quite a bit. Yeah. Um, the, the no food Food was difficult. Um, I heard people in the surrounding cells all banging their heads against walls and being wound up. Yeah. One way they were being wound up was being told there was an emergency sister to come in and they did the same to me yeah. um, did you what they, they they offered you a legal representation did they read you on rights I, did you, did you get any of the usual due process no really they didn't really at the desk they said do you understand I said no I don't I'm baffled yeah. I don't understand any of it yeah. Yeah. at all yeah. and the one at the desk he just said you, you look you, you just have I haven't been in a police station before, or have you? I said, no, no, no not ever. Really. I, I'm mm. just, just completely yeah. Yeah. shocked. Yeah. And um, I had two collapses while I was in there, and the first one. There was rapid heartbeat and high pulse rate, and they wanted to take me to hospital. I said, but the duty says is coming. They led me to believe that after that, I could go yeah. out. Yeah. But it, it wasn't going to happen because the detective that has been arrested me when I was taken in I saw him creeping around the door laughing so when I look back on that they knew full well that I was never going to come out that day mm. it was all organised mm. on the second collapse um, before it happened, 
happened, I was wrong and told that the home that we'd reclaimed on the advice of shelters lawyers because the writ that was forged was declared forged by masters at the Royal Courts of Justice. So you're entitled, if you've had a, um, an illegal eviction, to go back, back and reclaim. So I learned that the home had been restolen by, by six police officers. Whilst you were in the cell? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It coincided. And I, I know that it was planned because when I was let out the following day, I was told, you're not going back there. We've secured it. So they were all working together. Yeah. Now, do, do you know whether, uh, I mean, are you telling me that paperwork for this arrest doesn't exist? Are they telling you that, 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 that you can't, there's no record of any of this? Or is there a record of your incarceration? Charing Cross said there wasn't. Um, I had it confirmed and put in writing by someone else at another police station yeah. and I've also spoke to an ex-policeman who said that this goes on and what, probably these type of arrest, so an illegal arrest, the only way you probably would get any type of record would be to go to the police station concerned where they hold yeah. a separate record yeah. in, the, in the prison part. Sure. And it is a prison despite what they oh, say yeah, yeah, because it is a prison cell yeah. it has a cold marble slab oh, yeah. and it's got a very 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 thin mattress yeah. and yeah. no pillow yeah. and, and there is a camera and it's going down, down onto the toilet and they yeah. assured me you couldn't be seen because it didn't take in the toilet. Yeah. Yeah, well. And another thing which I spoke to another man about who had been in there is the heat got turned up until yeah. it was on Bearable and at 11 15, approximately, I had a seizure and was taken to the hospital. Right, you think that might have been done deliberately? The man told me they put the heat yeah. up. What sort of treatment did you receive physically while you were there? With, 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 um, you mentioned something about some senior female uh, uh, officers being present at, uh, at, uh, at some, some sort of uh, abuse of authority. Well, they, they tore everything off me. They tore off items of clothing in rough and they, they tore off um, head covering because I'm particularly um, 
because I converted from Christian to Islam, that's another issue that I get. Um, abuse. Yeah, I, I do, yes. Yeah. 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 They... state for the world, really, isn't it? Well, I... I... I all, all I try to do is help all these other people across the UK mm. that had cases like mine. Yeah. Um, well, Islam is a religion of peace and... Uh, and our campaign is to stop war, war to stop the money making from war and there are children Children mm. and babies, tiny little babies, being blown apart in Palestine and in Gaza. So the Middle East is a pile of rubble. Mm. I, I mean, I, I thought the UK was, was a place of free speech. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm not in any way terrorist inclined because whatever yeah. religion you, you are. It doesn't allow you to kill. No, you're right. And so, you know, I always thought the UK was a place of free speech. And indeed, Michael, uh, I call him Michael, the last barrister on the case, when he, we were. Uh, uh, standing outside Brentford Court, and I told him some, some things. He bristled with rage. He said, "I'm going in there. I want to see, see the judge in his chambers." Mm. And he was stopped. Mm. And I haven't seen him since. Really? I haven't seen him since, and well, I, I haven't. He was the last barrister. Let's see if we can't find him. Michael. Off. Yeah, we'll find him. Michael is not, I, I desperately, because he was, he said this can't go on in the UK. No. It can't. Well, it not like in a UK court of law. Sounds like we need to find him as well then. And Shogna has disappeared. So, so you were in cells uh, up mm. to 25 hours. Um, they've stripped you, they've kept you, it's cold, then they've made it hot, mm. they've given you uh, any time offered medical attention, were you off, uh, was your welfare? Not until I, I got, not, not until I got to the extreme. Yeah. I, I begged because I suffer from claustrophobia and agoraphobia combined because I've got Asperger's syndrome and dyspraxia. Sure. Dyspraxia is, I mean, I, I have blackouts. Yeah. I, um, I have muscle pain, particularly under stress. And um, the lights, lights and noise. Now, lights I, I see as bright than anybody else. Yeah. All my senses are heightened. The noises sure. I, I hear louder. So the light that they kept shining all night, the light was left on bright. And um, I started one of the police actually when they came in said, "You don't look. You're not looking well. Are you all, all right?" And that was mm -hmm. when the first collapse came, and they got, got me out, out because I was begging for air. Mm -hmm. I said, if I 
can just smell some air at the door, please. I am not to shut up this tiny little square window. Yeah, yeah. Because one once the tiny little square window shut, yeah. it was I think it's claustrophobic. And and they, they had no regard for this. No, 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 they, they didn't. And, and they had assured people and friends that sure. they would leave the cell door open. And, and so it's telling me that after 25 hours, they just opened the door and said, You can go now. No, there was some um, questioning in a room. Right. What, what were questions? Um, questions about things that they had been into the, the home and, and got, and this was leading into allegations of crime. There was um, things I didn't recognize but I know that although the house was under an injunction relatives have been strolling in and out um, police strolling in and out and it isn't a place where you could say <laughs> that there had been no one to tampering with the premises and indeed you know the house was a scene in a crime what 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 about what happened there we i was being sexually assaulted no dis no regard for preserving the scene a crime yeah, for is... me or for Raymond yeah, yeah. who was beaten yeah so you're saying that, that I mean as, how quickly was it contaminated after did they ever go and do any kind of investigation at the house of forensically um, after the final took on board what had happened to you, you know, uh, because at didn't. first there was the denial of it entirely from their point of view, wasn't it? It's like they were, there was confusion reigning with the police over who these people were, why they were, why the police certainly didn't do something at the time there were three van loads of them outside four yeah four, four. Van loads laughing laughing um at these bailiffs pulling you and raymond out of the house mm. completely in completely unaware that, that mm. they they violated the mm. way up there mm. and mm. beat them. i mean mm. The woods was, was, was people's faces blooded and bruised. Um, did they not see any physical? They were not. Their only interest was to help them. Their their only concern. I said, but they said they've got a rip. They've got a rip. Yeah. And I, I held a computer record and I had the, um, I said it's cut and pasted. Yeah. So they didn't want to know. They, they really didn't want to know. Not one of them took any interest in no. the fact that this could be a very, very serious crime in, in, in progress. Fucking lousy 
coppers. You, in the old days, in my opinion, coppers used to always have a bit of intuition and follow their noses. You know that old saying, follow your nose? And today, it seems to me they're just employing psychopaths, but that ties in with what you were saying about they work for these banks privately, or they work. I, I didn't realize it was police. Tell me about that. The police work privately. Well, you see, um, using the police reserves. a lot of other victims have found this as well because what you've got is. You've got cases going into the, the county courts where it's filtered out of the main court, which means it's going into a private room. Yeah. And the reason it's kept outside of the system is so they can control the outcome. And when you look at the computerized record, Boards, mm. your, your fate is decided no matter how far along you go and the most cruel thing about this is the solicitors and barristers will jump on, on your own included yeah. and there is no way it, you're going to get an outcome or a remedy in law and yet they, they will all, all jump on you like, like vultures feeding mm. off the carcass. Yeah. And that, that is the most horrific thing. Yeah. Well, how much was the, the, the property of yours they, they stole? Um, because it's Chiswick and property values of res. And it's anything 1.7 to 1.9 and when you think that after 90 days they've taken out insurance that they haven't declared so, so technically when you step into the court nobody owes a more and also so that ties in with the fact that they list the paperwork they list, these houses are listed as abandoned yeah. everywhere you look at this there's a scam going on yeah. at every turn and you think these, 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 they're, 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 they're actually well, for want of a better word, the criminal cartel going around and executing uh, uh, this kind of operation on many different people's houses, uh, totally unlawfully, with cut and paste, just, just on, on, the, on the back of a, what sort of debt was, was it right at the start of bank, bank charge? It escalates from well, I, I've, spoke to, to, I've been assisting many people across the UK and in yeah. London, and it always starts off. It, uh, there's a bank charge. Um, many people who didn't have, have a mortgage. Um, it the thing is even the contract where someone would go and sign a mortgage breaks the nineteen eighty nine law of property and miscellaneous act because when you sign for a mortgage you should have two witnesses there because that is a 
a big thing you're doing. Yes. So they tell people to leave the date blank and they add the date later because they've gone off to get the money because they right. don't have the money. Yeah. That, but if, if that breaks contract law, they've clearly broken it as fraudulent. Yeah. But if a judge were to give that, then that would mean a big payout for everybody yeah. since 1989. It would be another yeah. PPI payout. But Legitimately and lawfully, it should be allowed because contract law has been broken. It's fraudulent practice. Yeah. You're not told that hidden in agreements you sign, you've given away part of attorney. Mm -hmm. See, and this is the sort of stuff you've been trying to. I like. Well, it's a carousel of fraud. Yeah. It's fraud going on on, on the land registry. Yeah. There's two sets of papers. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone that buys a repossession will not have clear title. Yeah. Chain of title has been broken. Yeah. And it has been cases where where people have come back and we claim that is it land grabbing as such? Are land grabbing what massive doing? land grabbing uh, and, and with the fact that the cases don't exist they can't get enforcement papers because then there there would be paperwork that would show up what they were doing so what they do is they download writs and applications for warrants from the internet from pdf so i found up one website called fix who are a quite law abiding enforcement agency yeah. And they were quite concerned with what I told them, and they shut down the PDF part because you could literally go on and get anything. Yeah. Anybody could go to someone's house, and yeah. if you fold it in quarters, yeah. which is you will find they're out doing folding it in quarters. Yeah. Yeah. And they say to the police, this is this. This is written. The police aren't looking at it. And they, they wouldn't, they're, they're not, I don't, it sounds to me like they need a massive training push um, to, to get them up to speed with, with what, what. I, I, I suppose I know. In due time. Or they're on, on the side of, of the I no longer so. I no longer believe they're being duped. You don't think they're being duped? No, no, because I have spoken to policemen and, and the, the police have the, the most fantastic legal department and, and I no, no longer believe that they so are on the gravy train. They're actually taking the money. They're taking. They're taking the king's coin to come mm. out yes. and, and physically oversee and ensure that the, um, the public's view of an eviction, like. Um, and it's all above board, but they know full well that it's not, and they're all on 
to take? Yes, because if you look at the behaviour, I term it the smash and grab. Yeah. It's it's literally if you can think of a thick, heavy door being chopped in half, yeah. it's the smash and grab to, to get you out before you expose it fully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, they, they've grabbed your land rights and your occupation rights, which yeah. is very strong in English law. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, because obviously, you know, you, you have plans ahead for for, um, for fighting back. You're not going to take this line. No, 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 no. 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 Um, and many, many, many other victims of this also are not going to go away. Right. Well, this is it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, what we're hoping to also find out is if, if any of these bailiffs, these fake police bailiffs, whoever they were, a sheriff's name, um, if they if if they've assaulted anyone else, or if they've used these tactics on anyone else, so we're technically appealing. For for yes, I've spoken forward. to the people that have have the beatings, the Um, I, I don't. Or the same bailiff firm, should we say, or the security mm -hmm. firm? Well, this we, you, you're pretty aware of who these people are already, aren't you? You've yeah. Pictures of your yes. attackers, and you've got video of your attackers. I mean, I, I was told um, after the seventh of December, and I did have a meeting with, with um, Inspector yeah. at Chiswick Police Station. Yeah. Um, assured me that, that well he just said to me I wish I could go and get your home back yeah yeah well, um, he later turned out to be not on, on the level because he was involved in he said to me, another one bites the dust. High priority will be given to the attack, but the other thing with fraud is civil. I said it isn't, and I, I proceeded to tell him why, yeah. and that there was some people inside the Queen's Bench Enforcement Division. Issuing forged writs, mm -hmm. and I told him part of the whole operation. That, sorry, what, what were they doing? Say that again. Do In you... the, the Queen's Bench Enforcement Division is where, where the doctored writs come, come from. You're saying that, that that's where they come from. Yes. In the Queen's Bench Division. So. Yes, we, enforcement. We know yeah. where they're coming from. Yeah, enforcement. Yeah, and I, I, I've been up after the people, and they're quite aggressive. I've been up on my own to confront them. Right. Well, we'll probably avoid doing that in future. We'll take a camera mm. team along and yes. some investigators. Some big because quite naturally, 
um, I, it was quite simple. I said, can I see the leave of transfer certificate up from the central London County Court, please, for this? Yeah. And they hit the roof. Yeah. The lot of them in there hit the yeah. roof. Because you, you've that. That's the key, isn't it? Really, they yeah. haven't got one. They haven't yeah. got it. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's that. That's the whole. That's the whole thing blown. Boom. Right. Yeah. And, and the company. Mm -hmm. The company called Sher yeah. Group. I was told by a master to go down there to one fetter lane. Go in there. And I ask, tell them there'll be four bits of paperwork and you want to see them. Mm. But they, they, they wouldn't, mm. no, they weren't having it. Mm. So they, they said, what police station are you dealing with? I said, I'm not going to tell you because that's not information for yeah, you no. to know. Yeah. You, you just, you said you would give me the four bits pieces of information the day after and you're not doing it now. Yeah. Well, you know, Sher Group are one of the most corrupt and um, brutal. They were involved in the Occupy London um, eviction. They, they, they were involved in just about every um, eviction. They're involved in debt chasing every every bit of paperwork I And indeed you always had show group written on it. The um, woman mm -hmm. has her name on the front of the writ. Yeah. And the, the writ was cut and pasted. It was based on an order from twenty eleven to someone that never lived at the address, it got struck out in 2012, and then they said it was refiled, which I now know is wrong. You can't refile something that isn't in the court system. So, first point, it's a year, it's out of date. It's 2011, it was based on the 2011, that was 2015. Mm. I did say that to the police, but they mm. weren't interested. Yeah, for some reason you think for, for, for dates are very, very important when it comes mm. to policing. You know, times and dates and stuff like that. You'd think they would be interested in, in dates mm. when something is valid. Valid when something is expired, um, but they you, you say then not. Um, so obviously, the, the, since then, have you had um, more, more um, uh, stonewalling in every department? Do you feel? What what's your current state of play with all of this? What if what's frustrating you at the moment? Well, Charing Cross put the fraud alert on. They they felt it was fraud. Um, one lovely Asian PC yeah. and the the, the sexualist an attack yeah. that was put on yeah. and sent over nothing then nothing another back. no information back. nothing, nothing. No, no contact. then I went up there again and twice they put on the attack but by then they weren't putting the fraud done, they were saying it's civil. 
Right. Something had happened. So Some, it was changed. It. Yes. So yeah. the attack was going back on because also detectives after December the seventh, it was roughly about December. And a detective constable from the special squad that deals with sexual assaults had left a message, and a detective from the fourth squad had left a message. So I contacted both of them. And um, the, the detective never ever got back to me. She she, she never. And then when, when I was taken in, in there for the twenty-five hour incarceration, I was told, "Oh, she's been off sick." I said, "What all that, that time?" And once I went into the front. Uh, desk of Hounslow the police station and the station sergeant there and I said is there any news he, he just said <laughs> what are you worried about yeah. what you know you're still alive aren't you a, I still can't get my head around that bit you know, you know. how many men think I have a three hundred and fifty. Yeah. Well he, he said I've got twenty five men on. He said if you care to sit here for two or three hours, if not you lose your place in the queue. In other words Yeah. And that, that was how it was well. Mm. Right. Okay. Mm. So don't really be bothering well, I I no longer trust them. I, I wouldn't want, want to go within a, uh, an inch of them, and and, and mm. I just I I just think that they've polluted Chiswick because Chiswick Police Station has has been demoted. Yeah, you really, really do think there are other victims out. Up there. Mm. You know, um, it's time. Oh, I've spoken to them. I'm, I'm, I mean, um, one of them was crying on my shoulder mm. as she came from Coventry. Yeah. And she, she'd been beaten. Yeah. Um, I, I just think yeah. that they're out every day doing it they're yeah. out every day 